This is going to be your guide to using the Toxic Monkey in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So when we have a new Pokemon being introduced, especially a legendary Pokemon, you expect it to be good. But these stats don't really seem that crazy. We have 130 on the special attack, 106 on the speed. Alakazam hasn't been viable in generations, and that's a 135, 120. Now there is a weird kind of stat creep that I kind of just realized with these new Pokemon, because the average durability used to be like mid-70s, splash of 80, and now it's like mid-80s, and that's making things really weird. Damage creep isn't the only thing to worry about, it's durability creep, so it takes just a little bit more damage to kind of KO a Pokemon that might be a threat, even sweepers. Now, 66 defense is terrible, it's like 88-66, that's more what we're used to seeing, then we have an 88-90? That's getting close to Sil Valley damage analog, so a life orb isn't gonna cut it for KOing something like a Monkey Dory, and then, wait, yeah, we, we're just slightly defensively tankier than like starter Pokemon or common sweeper Pokemon. As for the stats, remind me a lot of Glamora. Once again, kind of seeing this durability creep that, okay, when we're doing our damage analogs, we're trying to like get over base 90s to get a KO. That's like on the higher end. And that higher end, the floor is catching up because we just have an 8381. It takes a bit more extra to KO a Glamora than other Pokemon that don't have defensive investment, but then you can run like Bulk Glamora and you survive a lot of things. So we kind of started damage theory early on in solving Generation 9 with Glamora, and this set's nasty. Wait, we could just do this with Monkey Dory, and then it gets really weird. Move set doesn't really seem that crazy on the surface. Toxic Chain, what's it gonna do? It gives you a 30% chance to poison them and then KO them if they had a sash or something. Frisk. Frisk is a really weird ability because it's generally seen as terrible. However, knowledge is very powerful in this game, especially with how ugly the Generation 9 meta and modern Pokemon has been. But either a Pokemon with Frisk isn't usable or just has a better ability. I, yeah, I'm taking Speed Boost or even Tinted Lens or, like every time before I even consider Frisk, even for its utility value. And then a lot of Pokemon aren't really used, but even if I'm looking at something like Noivern, yeah, I'm taking Infiltrator over the Frisk. Uh, Espathra, the Opportunist, is like a crazy new ability. And then, yeah, not a lot of other Pokemon get a chance to shine with it. But if Frisk is your only good option, then it's actually really nice to have because you can figure out if your opponent has a Life Orb or Choice Item before they attack. Same thing for something like a Focus Sash. Also get to identify what flavor of tank the opponent is. So it actually sounds like really nice because Toxic Debris is just useless on Glamora. Glamora got to do really well in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet competitive effectively without an ability. Toxic Debris doesn't matter. A Poison type Pokemon is coming in and soaking it or they're going to have like flying and steel types or the eighth doesn't matter in the modern Pokemon metagame. So like Glamora damage theory with Frisk and a different kind of moveset seems all right and the low defense ends up not mattering because the first thing i looked at is okay how many evs does it take to just catch glamora because we already have a few more hit points to work with and just more special defense so 188 investment puts us at 110 and then we only have 15 less hit points but then 10 percent more special attack so we're effectively as durable as a Glamora with the same special attack stat and arguably better type combination. So we have Ground, Ghost, and Dark Weakness. If we're doing this kind of investment, we can survive a super effective non-stab hit. Now if we start getting into like crazy boosting and crazy amounts of damage, yeah the super is going to pick us up. But that defensive investment does some pretty weird things with our base stats. And then it's just Dark, Ghost, and Ground with 4 resistances. Problem with Glamora! Four times weakness to ground. Glamora can run over pretty much anything. Like, if it gets to hit you with the move of its choice and its specs, you're getting KO'd. But if you have a faster Earthquake coming in, which is a lot of Pokemon, doesn't feel too good. A lot of Pokemon tech, steel, and water as well. Now, Psychic isn't really that common, and that's kind of a thing you can use the monkey for, because people aren't respecting or not really caring for Psychic, so they'll just leave a Poison type out there vulnerable, and then you come in with a super effective Psychic hit, and you're going to destroy them. Uh, we just talked about that with Okidogi. It's like, yeah, it is four times weak to Psychic, but who's using Psychic type moves? Maybe a Psyshock Flutterman, you know? But then you just 
walk up with Monkey Dory, it's just naturally faster, and it has a 4x, and also Poison is a common and strong typing. So, worst case, you're like forcing out the Terra, best case, they already used it, or they get greedy, and then you just KO them. Sludge Wave, we saw it on the Glamora. This is your neutral KO bread and butter. You do crazy amounts of damage with a 130 special attack, 95 power stab move being boosted by choice specs. Yeah, you don't need to like double down into Terra Poison to amplify your damage at that point. So it does open up some Terra options. We also have Shadow Ball, Ghost type Pokemon. Monkey Dory just beats it. Now, Ghost into Psychic can get kind of awkward, like just a faster sweeping uh, ghost type Pokemon. Golden Go likes going speed investment, so depending on that mix or set, just outspeed you and wreck you on a Shadow Ball. So that's kind of a 50 50 right there. And then even though no one uses Gengar, it's going to be like a faster natural Shadow Ball or ghost type move you're going to enc encounter. Then we have Terra Ground. This could also be the saving, which is like, okay, not even taking the risk. Got to go Terra Ground into the Golden Go, anyways. And now we effectively have an Earth Power, Choice Specs, Stab, 130. And again, we kind of saw that happen on the Glamora to just be really powerful. Uh, it means like you still have the Earth Power and don't have to tear on Glamora. For Monkey Dory, you do. But you can also just reserve the ability to not. If nothing threatens you or you don't need to hit a ground on the opponent, you can preserve your Terra. And that's pretty nice. And remember, your ability lets you see the shenanigans your opponent is trying to pull. On Glamora, you're just kind of sitting there going, fine then, keep your secrets. So, the question is, like, does that make Monkey Dory good? Because we're not seeing a crazy amount of Glamora, but Glamora is one of those Pokemon that when someone has it in the right team comp, doing the right things, catching the right people off guard, it's going to smack you. The reason why I adopted this Glamora is because it ran me over. I went, oh man, we got a trash player thinking injury hazards are good. He's going to stealth rocks. He's going to try to get hit for the toxic debris bait and then not really be that much of a threat. And then I got mowed down by the specs. And I went, wait a second, this thing has 130 special attack? Wait a second, 130 special specs is like that nasty? Why wasn't people running Alakazam or other Pokemon like that earlier? It doesn't matter anymore. We now need to start running Choice Specs Glamora for the surprise factor and also just the nastiness that it has. So less surprise on the Monkey Dory, but still one of those things where like 106 speed is naturally outspeeding like everything because the speed tier between 90 and 120 doesn't exist anymore. So either you're getting outsped by a Paradox Pokemon or you're wall breaking everything under you. And 106 means you're extra wall breaking everything under you, which is pretty good. A uh, funny quirk about this moveset that just kind of happened, but it's also a Monkey Dory because your coverage doesn't really get too diverse, is that everything is immune by something. Normal, Steel, Dark, Flying, Levitate. It's kind of weird, but that's also why you just run the specs. Like, it's a revenge Pokemon, or you just kind of lead, and you go, well, I get to do whatever I want to any Pokemon right here. So that's where, like, this moveset came from on the type cover. So I was like, all right, Poison Psychic. We don't really see that. So how good is it offensively? It's good, minus the Steel type Pokemon. So that's why we put the Terra Ground in there. Oh, now we only have to worry about Skarmory, Celesteela, Corviknight. Celesteela isn't in yet. Good. And then we have, like, Corviknight, Skarmory. So these are always just nasty, hard to deal with Pokemon. But, like, Spec Shadow Ball, Corviknight has a really hard time keeping up with. So that could be fun. But even a full special defense Corviknight is going to get three hit KO'd by this, which can make it hard to set up for the Corviknight. And the thing about Shadow Ball is you can't ignore the 20% chance to lower special defense in these tank matchups. So, I mean, like, depending on how unlucky the Corviknight gets, depending on the moveset, like, okay, let's go minus one on Corviknight special defense. Oh, wait, now we're just two-shotting it. And if it's less, oh, it, it just never gets any momentum. So, yeah, even, like, certain weird Pokemon that seem bulky or have, like, all hit point investment, you're still finding two hit KOs on non-stab. 130 special attack acting up in Generation 9, which is weird because it's always been around. Where was the Choice Specs Alakazam just kind of, like, surprisingly dumpstering everything? I mean, Alakazam got play in, like, Generation 6, especially earlier than that. A lot of Focus Sash because it is so frail, but... I've seen a couple of choice specs, but usually people are like, oh, Magic Guard Life Orb, ha ha ha. And then that's where I was already on to damage theory back in like Generation 6. I think even before my channel, I was already ha always having these ideas of, wait a second, Life Orb just turns a 2-hit KO into a 2-hit KO. So it's not really doing anything for you. 
And being locked into choice packs could go pretty wrong, but Generation 9 is so ugly, it just kind of works now. And I've been doing that, like, Smogon ban debunking series. It kind of got put on hold because we had the Pokemon Presents, then Pokemon Worlds happened, then we had to get ready for the DLC. So I didn't really have a good time to upload those videos. Don't worry, I, I finished the rest of the series. It's going to be uploaded at some point. Uh, check out description and playlist and all that fun stuff. But, um, yeah, it's like either... Everything before Generation 8 was like completely fraudulent metagame and no one really understood Pokemon. Or the game is just different with like weird kinds of creep and a almost permanent meta shift where like, yeah, Pokemon plays this way now and this is what's optimal somehow. But I think that's going to be it from Monkey Dory, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. But for Lissify, you only showed us one moveset. Okay, um, what else does it get? Tell me, because, like, we have a special attacker with limited coverage that's very one-dimensional that effectively only has one ability because, again, I just find it so weird that we didn't have, like, Wo Chin exists. Like, we have Ting Lu. All of the freaking artifact legendaries exist as a sign of, like, power creep and game freak pushing the limits. And then this comes in, it's like, oh, we have a poke, like, Toxic Changes conflicts. Like, you look at it, it's like, oh, this sounds like the most busted thing ever. But either you want to one-shot your opponent, which means it doesn't matter, or you want to, like, stall out your opponent, which means you're just, like, landing the Toxic anyways. And, like, if you're going full defensive investment, an extra 20% chip damage from, like, a non... Like, just, like, a full defensive, non-offensive invested hit, proccing the Toxic Chain sometimes doesn't really, like, swing those damage numbers. And then there isn't, like, a stally hard toxic stall pokemon they can like all right i'll chip you away with, while toxic chaining and then find a way to play around it the best is like okie dogie being bulk drain punch and if drain punch doesn't have enough damage maybe toxic chain can do something in like a stally matchup but yeah toxic chain just isn't good and has no identity with any of the pokemon that get access to it and then the move says like yeah fake out and singles on a special attacker but that means you can't run the choice item nasty plot or calm mind baton pass there's gotta be a million better pokemon for that clear smog I mean, if they've, like, Dragon Danced or got any speed boosts or something, like, you're not stopping that that pain train, especially with a such a frail-ish looking Pokemon on the surface. And then Scarf is going to be too little damage. And then you just have nothing. If you want to go Taunt Nasty Plot, uh, there's, there's another really cool Pokemon you should know about called Hydreigon. I guess maybe that's it. You do the same things Hydreigon does, but you're less tanky but faster. And then you have kind of some different flavors. I've seen the substitute one, because, like, if it's just you outspeed a tank, you sub, and they try to go for a toxic or some low damage move that doesn't break the sub, that's that's fine. You don't you don't need the toxic at that point. Then you can, like, nasty plot and win the game off that. Monkey Dory has the same thing. But the problem is, like, Poison Psychic, uh, not great coverage. But I guess the nasty plot means it doesn't matter. So something like this, I don't know the item at that point. Yeah, after checking Hydreigon's Pokemon home data, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Because going Life Orb seems very overkill and unnecessary. Like, you hit the Nasty Plot, well, now you're just, like, neutrally KOing everything. If it's a resisted hit, then maybe the Life Orb pushes you over. But, like, sub damage into Life Orb damage could get kind of awkward, depending on, like, it breaking and then putting you into certain damage thresholds or something. Uh... Also, Sludge Wave Psy Shock, kind of risky. Feels really bad to lose the game on the spot to King Gambit, and King Gambit is one of the strongest Generation 9 Pokemon. I don't know if you change up anything here, because like, okay, well, I'm going to deal with King Gambit by putting in the Shadow Ball and getting KO'd anyways. So you don't really have too many outs, and it's like putting Terra Blast in and then like having to commit and only rely on the Terra Blast feels pretty bad. But I mean, maybe... Why not? I mean, if you don't Terra, having 80 power normal just to kind of cover up is all right, except into like Golden Go and stuff. So that's kind of weird, but Poison Ground has its own issues with the Corviknight. Fortunately, Corviknight, not super common, but just feels really bad to lose the game when you have all these immunities. And then some Pokemon you kind of don't want to be hitting not very effective. You have to kind of give and take with everything. What about Poison Electric? Yeah, that could still get kind of problematic. Poison Fairy, though. Eh, Steel-type Pokemon walk you. Yeah, being like... Well, actually, what happens if we're stuck on the Psychic instead of the Poison? Psychic Ground. Yikes. 
Poison water? The most acceptable? That... Ah, tox packs ruined your day. Like, yeah, that just doesn't feel correct. I don't think there's a right answer because of steel types. Yeah, after going through a lot of combinations, Sludge Wave, Terra Ground just kind of seems like the play. You just have to, like, not bring this Pokemon, depending on the opponent's composition, if there's just some weird stuff that could stop you. Um, then it comes down to a really specific playstyle and some other weirdness. Also, the thing about just go Modest Nature, Max Speed, just, just to make sure of things, and then you go Focus Sash. Now, that might sound like trolling if we're going sub Focus Sash, but you just have to, like, break the game in the most unexpected way as possible. Because Hydreigon is a really good revenge. Like, yeah, you just let one of your Pokemon get toxic down or burned down or, like, just stalled out. And eventually, you get KO'd. So then you just revenge onto the stall, set up a sub, and you go, okay, I'm down a Pokemon, but now you've lost the game. Because they switch on your nasty plot turn. And then they use their sweeper to break your sub, and then they get KO'd. And then you're just back into the winning tank matchup after that, especially in 3v3. But it also covers for the non-tank scenarios, just like the raw revenge into a sweeper Pokemon. Well, then you can eat the hit, focus Sash procs, and then you can still look for like some kind of super effective coverage, insane sludge wave damage, and maybe hopefully a KO. This could actually be the better moveset because of your options. Again, if they have a tank Pokemon, you can just end the game on the spot by bringing this in at the right time. And even then, it feels like you can still get some value. Also into a bulkier Pokemon that's like a two-hit KO with your whatever hits you're going for, neutral, like, Sludge Wave. Well, then Sludge Wave, they, like, choice ban slap you, and then you can just focus Ash and then hit him again. And if you're faster than the next Pokemon, one for one plus. Not blatantly, obviously, overwhelmingly powerful, but actually a threat. Anything that, like, sub-nasty plots is scary. The typing, like, Poison Psychic alone doesn't lead into like crazy combos or like two coverage sweeping but then if you get more coverage like with the specs it actually starts getting a bit more threatening so it could be meta dependent could be team dependent something might work and then we'll just have to see how it plays out but if this pokemon ends up taking off we'll kind of have an idea why so if you guys enjoy the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching